Okay, so here we have Yahoo Financially Fit. This is apparently some, uh, I don't know, some section out of their Yahoo Finance. And uh, I, I saw this actually, they advertised this this stupid story on the front page of the Yahoo website. And I've mentioned this before. The reason why, the main reason why Yahoo has been in decline and been in the sewer for quite a few years now is because of the content. The content sucks. Yahoo used to be, I believe, over a two hundred billion dollar market cap. Think about that for a second. That's close to what Microsoft's market cap is today. Of course, the majority of that was vast overvaluation due to the dot com bubble. Nevertheless, that financial strength of having a huge and enormous mega cap stock provided a lot of financial resources and a lot of ways to improve the business and sustain the business. But what happened? Yahoo continued to decline year after year. And I'm not going to go into this too much, but if you look at the current and former CEOs and other executives, and you'll see that they just happen to be Jewish, all of them, all the way back down from Mr. Kugel, who, by the way, not that this really matters, but just kind of throw this out there. I know uh, for a fact that he was a homosexual, he was kind of in the closet. But anyway, point is, is that it's all about content. Yahoo has trash content. It's been getting worse by the day. It's become the TMZ of the internet. It's just garbage. Even their financial content is just complete trash. And so this is just another example. So they have a section called Financial Fit. And I guess they have, you know, videos and articles about being a, a better consumer. Well, they have this feature on a pawn broker pawn shop and by the way let me just show you it's kind of ironic although expected predictable that they would also have advertisements or sponsors from the banks right so you can see this is sponsored by Bank of America and Visa complete scum and of course that's ironic because the banks are really the new pawn brokers now so I saw this and I'm thinking to myself well you know is it any coincidence and by the way, this lady, you know, the name kind of looks Arabic. She kind of looks a little Arabic, but I'm willing to bet that she's Jewish. I'm willing to bet a lot of money that she's Jewish. Just knowing what I know, not that, you know, Jews necessarily disresemble Arabs. The uh, Sephardic Jews are actually from the Semitic region. They're very related to Arabs. Anyway, so keep in mind we have this financially fit video, and they talk about this this guy with this so-called reality TV show in his pawn shop. How much do you want for it? How about a 32-inch TV? You want bling? Much... What kind of message is this sending people, sending the youth? You have a, a section called Financially Fit, and they promo some pawn shop guy. You know, I don't have anything against Mr. Gold. That's his business. He's free to run any business that he wants. The problem that I have is the media promoting this bullshit. And, you know, of course, they glamorize this this pawn business on their so-called reality TV show. And Yahoo, or I call it Yaju, is, of course, giving it more promo. Well, they have another uh, pawn show. I believe it's called Pawn Stars. Now, I don't know, but it doesn't seem to me that those guys are Jewish. They seem to be hicks. They could be Jewish hicks. I don't know. But we, we know one thing for sure. They're not obviously Jew, Jewish on Pawn Stars, the bald guy and his fat son and the old man. I would say they're probably not Jewish. You don't see that show being promoted here, right? Is it a coincidence? Once again, people, the Jews control the media. Anyone who tries to deny that simply has no idea what they're talking about. They're just showing their ignorance. And they control the media to enrich themselves, to enrich their own people at the expense of others. And that is an absolute fact. There's no doubt about that. And this is just another example that I created a video a couple of months ago showing how CNBC promoted a, um, a gelato company based in Dallas. And they overlooked another gelato company based in Dallas, which actually serves the retail market. The one that they profiled, you never even know who the company is because they, they cater to hotels and so forth. The other one, was owned by, started by Italians. Of course, the one they promote started by some Jewish guy who was, who basically stole the recipe or 
license it from uh, a family in, I think, Argentina or something. I mean, it wasn't even his own. The people from Italy came from Italy. Very successful story. They didn't want to promo it, though. It's because they're not Jewish, and that is a fact. Anyway, let's go ahead and listen to what you know they, they show on this uh, video here. See what kind of financial savvy we can gain from this. What you want for the watch? Les Gold is the tough-talking, larger-than-life reality star of Cable's Hardcore Con. He says his five decades of experience have given him a better education in business than any MBA ever could. And now he's revealing what he's learned in his best-selling book for what it's worth. We would sell it for $800. $800? I flipped... Of course, it's a book promo as well, right? Got to make sure and... and uh and promo the Jews with their books so they can become millionaires. You know, like Peter Schiff, his completely useless books that basically marketed him and his firm, him as a politician and his firm. He had his uh, Euro-Pacific Capital written on every other page. His books obviously didn't uh, help people make any money. As a matter of fact, his Crash Proof, it was such a failure that he had to write Crash Proof 2.0. Because it wasn't a crash proof. People that listened to him, they crashed. And his little book of bear and bull, Mark, as he talks about the commodity bubbles, the commodities soaring and it's going to be great. As soon as the book's released, the commodities start to collapse. So, but the bottom line is that Peter Schiff made tens of millions of dollars off his books. Why? Because he got promoted by the Jewish media because he's a Jew. And this is what they do. Meanwhile, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't even get the Jews to publish my book because they control the publishing industry, the most accurate and predictive book, insightful book, investment related, in, in, in many years, if not decades, if not ever. Not to mention, of course, I couldn't get any promo because I'm not a Jew. And of course, there's other issues as well. I address political hot buttons. But the fact is, is that if a Jew had written my book, they would have gotten it published in promo and they would be worth probably a few hundred million dollars if they had the track record I had. Through Detroit to visit his 50,000 square foot store, American Jewelry and Loan. Les, a third generation pawnbroker, closed his first deal at his grandfather's store when he was just a kid. A gentleman came in looking for a hydraulic jack. I was asking $14 for the jack. He offered me five or six dollars. We ended up settling on 10. And at seven years old, $10 was like my first million dollar deal. I was hooked immediately. You know, and by the way, he mentioned that. He's learned more from the pawn business about the world of business than he could ever learn from an MBA program. Well, I don't know how he can say that unless he's gotten his MBA, which I doubt. However, I'll agree with him. I'm quite sure he knows more about business than than the majority of MBA grads. You don't learn about business in business school. That's for damn sure. You learn about business doing business. Les's first rule of business, there's a market for everything. I took an Elizabeth Taylor brooch uh, for $100,000 in pawn. You know, I've taken in prosthetic limbs, prosthetic eyes. If somebody bought it once, my theory is somebody's going to buy it again. You bought a stripper pole. I'm good. Do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> well, how much did they go for? <laughs> well, we actually, we actually sold that stripper pole, and then we started manufacturing stripper poles. And if something's good enough for Les, it's good enough for his customers. I wear a big diamond earring, but I sell more diamond earrings out of my ear almost than I do out of the showcase. How many engagement rings do you create or sell a year? We probably do four, five, six thousand engagement rings a year. Are you kidding? But success doesn't come without failure. Les recalls the embarrassing time he paid five thousand dollars for a luxury watch that was actually counterfeit. Don't make a mistake. You'll never know how to fix it. That was a mistake that I wish I never made, but I did make that mistake. And for those curious about making a fast buck, Les notes some household items are more valuable than others. As always, look for jewelry. There is no question. Silver, diamonds, gold, platinum. Look in the crevices. Look in the corners. Look for old magazines. Look for old comic books. Look for sports memorabilia. American Jewelry and Loan makes 1,000 loans a day, and its location on Detroit's 8 Mile makes it one heck of an economic barometer. Detroit is going bankrupt. Detroiters are not. But when the pawn line is long, I know the economy is really bad. When the redeem line or the pickup line is longer, the economy is getting better. So right now, what I'm seeing in, in Detroit is my pawn line is getting shorter and my redemption line is getting longer. Yes, the city has a big uh, financial burden on itself. But right now, it's coming back, slow but sure.
And of course, we want to hear from you. What is your absolute best pawn shop story for Yahoo Finance? I'm Farnish Tarabi. Yeah, so somebody communicate with this stupid lady and tell her what a dumbass article and, and video. I mean, did you all learn anything about being financially fit, being savvy from this? Of course not. It was just a way to promo trash TV. As a matter of fact, I would not be surprised at all if Yahoo was paid to promo this. You know, because this is a TV show. They talk about it in the article below. They have a link to the website in the article, Hardcore Porn. I wouldn't be surprised at all. As a matter of fact, I'm willing to bet that the network that airs this, that they paid Yahoo to promo this. Or else the publisher paid. Somebody got paid to air this garbage. So, folks, you see what the problem is with free content? You come on these websites and you waste your fucking time. And you get misinformation and you get trash. And you don't know any better. You don't know that there's actually good information out there. You know why? It's just like the same thing with, you know, the Jewish control of the media and the banks. If someone controls something by a monopoly, and let's just look at the media, people have forgotten that there's actually some quality programming out there. It's just that it was made about 30 years ago, you know, and before. Because all the programming... It's controlled by a few hands, and what do they do? They put a bunch of trash TV on so that people don't realize that, hey, you know what? There is some quality programming. And this is where Netflix is stepping in, by the way. Although Netflix does have a lot of trash TV, they also have a lot of the older good shows and movies. So this is the problem. When you go on these ad-based websites, you get used to the ad-based model. And I've written about this before. The vast majority of websites, especially news, they're all ad-based. And they have, they're low yield and they're slanted, they're biased, but you get used to that because you don't have a good perspective. If you want top insight, you need to pay for that. Okay. That's why I started restricting the content on my website because I know I have extraordinarily valuable content, not even the, the research. I'm talking about just the articles. Of course, the research is much more valuable, but just the articles that I, that I write. Some of, the, some of them can save you endless amounts of money. If you, for instance, understand how much you're really being charged in mutual funds, you could avoid them and save tens of thousands of dollars in fees per year. And there's just numerous examples. Um, another example is understanding how the media works, understanding the real track record of these, of these clowns. And that's why the Encyclopedia of Bozos, Hacks, and Snake Oil Salesmen is so valuable. Because if you want to make money, the first step, and arguably, the most important step is knowing how to avoid losing money. Anyway, that's all I had to say about this. I just wanted to point it out. It may not seem like a big deal, but would you have noticed these points if I had not brought them up? It's time to start consciously thinking. Start criticizing things, analyzing what you're being fed instead of just swallowing it. Stop being a drone. Start using your mind. If you don't use your mind, if you don't exercise your brain, it's going to turn into mush. And that's what they want. Everybody wants that. The corporations want that. Wall Street wants that. The banks want that. The government wants that. And they're doing a pretty good job. People are buying everything. They're taking out all kinds of loans. They're making stupid investment decisions. They watch CNBC and Fox and read the Wall Street Journal and all this trash. People need to start thinking on their own and learning who to stay away from.